Broadcasting live from the water market on the plain of Boblovia, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome, Graham here with Hi. Kathleen. Hi. And our special guest, Mark Rosewater. Hello. Hello, Yay. Mark. Thank you so much for joining us on Tap oh, Tap Concede. Talking on, I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, today we are doing, we're not uncracking, but we're cracking unpacks. Uncracking a pack is the complete opposite of what we're doing. But we're uh, we're uh, cracking some unpacks, and uh, we're going to tell some. Well, Mark is going to yep. tell some un, some un -stories. Un stories. Okay. Uh, yeah, before we begin, to this. before we begin, uh, tap tap concede is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Check out cardkingdom.com/lrr for a kingdom of cards, uh, whatever cards strike your fancy. Well, magic cards, but whatever whatever strikes your fancy, and. This show and all the shows that we do are brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Okay, okay. Let's, so we have here a pack of time permitting, unstable, yep. but also unhinged and unglued. Okay. And we're going to go through them and just, uh, Mark's going to... I'll tell stories. Tell some stories. This pack of unglued was given to us by John Levy at PAX Prime okay. 2016. Okay. So 1998. So there's only 10 cards in this pack. I'm glued to pack only 10 cards. In going there. back in time, uh, 19 years? Uh, 1998. Yeah. Yeah. So first up we so have... Almost 20 years. Foul Play. Oh, okay. is that? Foul Play. There we go. Two and a blue enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a 1-1 one, one chicken. Yeah, there was a chicken theme. So in the first un oh, right. unglued... Um, I was given the, the the task of the idea of a silver bordered set. Silver bordered meant not tournament legal, mm -hmm. and th th I was I was the most out of the box thinker. They're like, Mark, do something with this. Wait, so uh, this wasn't even your idea? The, the idea of a silver border was my idea, right. but I was given the task of here's an idea for a set. It's a silver border. You can't play it in tournaments. Do something with that. Huh. So the idea of it being humorous was my idea. The uh -huh. idea of it being a parody. The idea like the idea of it breaking boundaries and stuff. That that was sort of my idea. But it started with. Um, uh, Bill Rose and Joel Mix saying, what is non-tournament? You can do whatever you want. It's non-tournament legal. Um, so one of the things I did was I wanted to have some comedy elements in it. And so I decided to put a chicken theme in. There's a chicken theme that runs throughout. So one of my favorite moments uh, came from Joel Mick, the one of the people who sent me on the pack. He cornered me in an elevator or somewhere. He cornered me at some point. Actually, I don't know if it's an elevator. We're one of the elevators that was uh, But he cornered me and he said, he goes, are chickens funny? And, like, I had to spend, like, 15 minutes explaining to him. I'm like, well, the rubber chicken is a staple of comedy. Like, trying to explain, like, why chickens are funny. Why so, chickens are funny. I, okay, I mean, I knew that. I'm a comedy writer. But I'm like, okay, how do I explain why chickens are funny? So this is one of the cards where uh, I was trying to, we needed some control cards. And so, like, I was trying to, like, how do I get chickens into more things? Like, well, I turned you into a chicken. So that's where this card came from. Uh, next up is the Goblin Bowling Team. Okay, Goblin Bowling three, Team. Three in a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin. Whenever Goblin Bowling Team damages a creature or player... Roll a six-sided die, and it deals to that creature additional damage equal to the die roll. So it turns out that at the time, there was a bowling team in, at Wizards. There was five people on the bowling team, and this art is the five people who are on the team. Um, the big guy, I think, is Charlie Catino, and then the guy in the back is Bill Rose, and then... Is one of them Monty Mons? They all said of, Mons. One of, the, one of them was Mons. One of them, like, I think Mons is the one getting crushed. <laughs> uh, Beverly was in one. Anyway, the, it, this was the actual, there was an actual bowling team, and this art was modeled after the people from the bowling team. Um, one of my favorite things about this art is, in the back, it says, uh, aim for this. Like, the, like, that shows a pin. So, like, the goblins, you know, make sure they understand where they're, what they're doing, because uh, the goblins are problematic. Uh, rock Lobster. Oh, Rock Lobster. So, uh... Four mana artifact creature. So four, three. Scissor Lizards cannot attack or block. This one's a double joke. Right. So, the, the, the thing that, uh... Yeah, the thing about... Uh, the, the, so, there's Rock Lobster, Paper Tiger, and uh, Scissor Lizard. Yeah. Uh, and the idea was... I like the idea of making a Rock, Paper, Scissors mechanic. So, each... It's, it's three cards. That each one trumps the other. Um, and the idea was that I knew I wanted the name Rock... And uh, lobster, uh, rock and scissors and paper in it. Mm -hmm. So rock lobster is actually a song. So it, it's playing off something. Yeah. And paper tiger is an expression. There, there's really no such thing as a scissor lizard, but scissors is a little bit harder to make something out of. What would um, you? Yeah, I'm trying to think. So of... I, I, I had to be a creature. So I ended up with scissor lizards. Like I had rock lobster and paper tiger out of the gate, and then I spent so long trying to get scissor lizards. But anyway, rock lobster was. Uh, I, I think the first thing I came up with. I thought we had to have a card called rock lobster. Um, so anyway, there's and many take the lobster for granted because it's you know anyway, lots of lots of puns. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Kenley just sighing deeply. Prismatic wardrobe. Okay, so the design behind this card was. Oh, is, oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Single white mana sorcery. Destroy target card that does not share a color with clothing worn by its controller. You cannot choose an artifact or land. So what I was trying to do here was I wanted to do some meta things. Like I loved the idea that when you went to an untournament, like it, things matter that don't normally matter, mm -hmm. and that you could prepare ahead. But if you didn't. Uh, so the idea for this card is, uh, I liked the idea that people would come to magic tournaments dressed in all five magic colors. So this card is sort of like, well, if you don't, you know, you can have some problems. So maybe you want to wear all five colors. Um, and this card ended up not getting played enough. Like it didn't. The effect I wanted was that when you came to an unevent, you'd wear all five colors. They didn't. They didn't quite play out that way. Right. So. Who is this character? Because he shows up on another card as well, doesn't he? Um, is this the guy from the double cycle? I, I think so. There's a, there, there's a five cards out of the double cycle where you do something now and the next turn. Yeah. And there's a guy that shows up in that. I think this might be that guy. I think so. Which just means the artist that drew this drew him too. I, 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 Fair enough. Next card is Temp of the Damned. Temp of the Damned. Two and a black for a 3-3 three, three zombie. When you play Temp of the Damned, roll a six-sided die. Temp of the Damned comes into play with a number of funk counters on it equal to the die roll. And during your upkeep, remove a funk counter from Temp of the Damned or sacrifice it. Um, so this card came about, we have what we call slush. Mm -hmm. So when we do art, sometimes what happens is um, we don't use it for whatever reason. Not because not the art is bad or anything, just the card gets killed. Or something. You know, a lot of times we'll make something and it doesn't get used. Right. So one of the things we're always looking for is ways to use slush art because we own the art, we paid for it. Is there a card that can use it? And a lot of times it's problematic because certain art is built in a certain world or something. And it's hard to just, you know, our, our worlds are so exact that you can't just move things from one world to another. So one of the things about Unset sometimes is I can go look at Slush because, okay, it's, I mean, Unstable has a little bit more of a world than most, but right. Unglued didn't have any world at all. So this is a piece of Slush art. I had the art for, I, I built this card around the art. Like, what is this thing? And I love the idea of a zombie that's kind of like it's got a day job. And so really what this card is, is just he stays around for DX turns with sort of the design. So are the funk counters, is that he's in a funk, He's got the funk, or he just kind of smells. He smells. Is the idea. Okay, that's right. Because he's a zombie. He's a yeah, zombie. I wasn't sure. Not just, known just for freshness. But he's not just any temp. He's a zombie temp, so he's temp of the damned. Right. Okay. Everyone, uh, lick your lips for some free range chicken. Three and a green for a three three chicken, uh, and has an activated ability for one and a green. Roll two six sided die. If both die rolls are the same, free range chicken gets plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is that number on each die. Otherwise. If the total roll is equal to any other total, you have rolled this turn for free range chicken, sacrifice it. So I'm going to read the reminder text too. Right. For example, if you roll two threes, free range chicken gets plus three plus three. If you roll a total of six later in that turn, sacrifice it. Right. So the idea was there's a push your luck mechanic. Yeah. Where the wow. idea is that you have the possibility of it getting bigger. So one sixth of the time it would get bigger, anywhere from plus one plus one to plus six plus six. Mm. Um, and the idea is every time you roll it, there's a chance that, it, well, the first time you roll it, there's no risk. The second time you roll it, there's some risk that it goes away. And so it's a, it's a push your luck card. I had a cycle of chickens at common, so this is the green chicken. Um, so it's part of the, the chicken cycle. Um, and anyway, I just I was trying to use a, a dice mechanic, so that, Mark Rosewater's works. Chicken Cycle. It's a chicken cycle. I still haven't read the third book. Uh, Flock of Rabid Sheep is next. It's okay. X green green for a sorcery. Flip X coins, an opponent calls heads or tails. For each flip you win, put a rabid sheep token into play. These tokens are two two green sheep. So the idea here was we were playing around with some randomness. Um, we were tr un the unsets can do more randomness because the variance can be higher. Mm -hmm. So I was just playing around with with coin flipping. The idea is I flip a lot of coins. Um, I just I think they ended up being sheep because we were trying to be funny. Oh, oh, Vena Mancer was a card in Real Magic. Oh, they made yeah. sheep tokens that people liked. Right. And we it's hard to put sheep in Magic, so we hadn't made more sheep. So I just, I wanted to throw a bone to the sheep lovers, and so I, we made made them uh, why they're rabid. I think it was funny that they're rabid. I'm, I'm not sure why we made them rabid. It just sounded funnier. What a, this one's a great reference. Urza's Contact Lenses. Zero mana artifact, when it uh, comes into play tapped and does not untap during its controller's untap phase, all players play with their hands face up. Clap your hands twice, tap or untap Urza's Contact Lenses. So there's a card called Urza's Glasses that let, lets you look at your opponent's thing. Mm -hmm. um, so this card was inspired by, you know the commercial where you turn the lights on and off? Clap oh, on, the clapper. clap off, clap on, the clapper. This was inspired by the clapper. Literally, this mechanic is the clapper mechanic. 
Um, and the idea was that you could you could change it whether or not you wanted to be able to see things. And so you, you basically it was a glass of Urza that you can control, but because they're contact lenses, you could take them in and out. Was the idea? Um, but, the, but, but hold on, hold on. Do you, yeah. They come into play tapped. Yeah. Okay. Un Tap and does not untap during its controller's untap phase. Right. Okay, we that's had, fine. But basically, you had to clap your hands to untap it. But 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 like all like the, the the clause of all players play with their hands face up has nothing to do with the tap thing. So the clapping is just for tapping and untapping. The idea is maybe I want like in order to see your hand, I have to show you my hand. Right. Is this so, so the idea is maybe I want to hide information, so it lets me choose whether or not I want it to be exposed or not. Oh. If this was normal magic, like for one mana, you is could this change this from the when artifacts only did their thing when they were tapped. Um, this because there's nothing on the card that indicates that. Oh, correct, correct. At the time, tapped artifacts shut things off. <gasps> okay. Because oh. um, on, on the card, there's nothing that indicates correct, correct. whether or not yes. the players. Uh, I, I believe their the oracle wording up. now says if tapped, it, it doesn't. I mean, magic at the time tapped artifacts. <laughs> Paul's shaking oh, his no? head. I, <laughs> so now it's um, just for fun. Uh, I mean, the, okay, actually, when I get back, we're, we're, we're updating all the cards in Oracle Text. I should make sure this is corrected. Um, yeah. it, is oh. it is supposed to turn off when you clap it, oh. when you take off the so. And okay. it's free! Um, oh, my gosh. So. Yeah, it, it does not say anything uh, about so, so, uh, so, so. not working when you're Okay, well, now I, I did some work here. I learned something well, that I got to fix. When are silver border cards legal in Commander until? Now. Now? Now, and, okay. And six, so I got, for six weeks. I, I, got, I got some changes to make to some Commander. There's, there's also the sunglasses. Oh, the for sunglasses were. Yeah. That, that's a real card. Yes. yes. So is the glasses. Gla gla Ur Urza, he likes his glasses. Yeah. Hey, and okay, the, next. the accessories make the And the rare. Mine, mine, mine. Four green, green for an enchantment. When it comes into play, each player puts his or her library into his or her hand. Uh, you skip your discard phase, and you do not lose as a result of being unable to draw a card. Each player cannot play more than one spell a turn, and if it leaves play, each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into their library. Okay, so the art director for this product was a guy named Daniel Jellin, mm -hmm. who some people might know. He's a, uh, he did magic art for many, many years. He worked at Wizards for a whole bunch of years. Um, uh, Heather Hudson is his wife, and she drew this card, and he, the wizard's picture of this is Daniel. I mean, he's got a beard, which Daniel doesn't, but, uh, or didn't always. Um, but anyway, that's Daniel's face. So, anyway, Heather was making a little nod, throwing Daniel in here. Um, With his library card. The funny thing about this card is, this is the kind of card I made back in the day that was a little over the line that really isn't over the line anymore. No, this, I mean, could, I, this could absolutely be This could be a definitely be a black border card. card. We, we, we've now... As time's gone on, we've stretched what we're willing to do, and this is just something that, yeah. while it was a little over the line at the day, is no longer over the line. Hmm. And we got a lovely Therese Nielsen forest. Okay, oh, I've told the story, but I'll tell it again because it's an awesome story. So Chris Rush, uh, the artist Chris Rush, did Black Lotus, did a whole bunch of magic cards. He was, worked for Wizards originally. He, was, he did graphic design. He made the mana symbols. Um, and anyway, uh, I think there's another interview I talked about this, yeah. but, uh, but Chris came up with this idea of doing full art lands, and he couldn't convince anybody to do them. Which and, today seems baffling. Yeah, it seems baffling. And then Chris told me about this on a plane ride to Gen Con, and when I was making the set, I was doing this weird wacky set. Like, that's an awesome idea, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to make them. So I just made them, and no Nobody's one stopped me because I was making the weird set. Because like, well, it's weird, but Mark's making the weird set. And then they were super popular, so... Um, apparently, Chris knew what he was talking about. All right. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to Unhinged. Kathleen, you want to take point on the pack? Sure. So this one was given to us by John Levy at PAX Prime oh, the same 2016. Person. Oh, same person. Oh, look at that. John, your time's come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first up in the pack, we have... Mons Goblin Waiters. <laughs> 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 Which is what? Well, that's 1-1 uh, one, one for 1. And uh, sacrifice a creature or land, and you can add half a red mana to your mana pool. I that is a half of a red mana yes. symbol? This is the only card in the set. Well, I'm sorry. City of Ass produces one and a half of a colored mana, and this produces half a red. There is a little girl that uses half a white to cast it. Um, so we messed around with fractions a little bit in the set, so we tried playing around with half a mana. Um, this card is a parody of, a, of the card Mons' Goblin Raiders, which was an alpha, mm -hmm. named after a guy named Mons. Who, um, oh yeah, there's the city mass. Um, a guy named Mons who works in R&D. He's worked in a long time. Uh, Mons Johnson. Um, and anyway, uh, I just thought it was a funny joke, I guess. I, I, I we, we, 
I mean, I this think card started with its name. It yeah, oh, yeah. called, no, what absolutely. would Mons Goblin Waiters do? And so we are the. I mean, Mana Ramp is not something like it's kind of outside of the red color pie, so you got to make sure it's like. I guess all the no. you sacrifice color permits yeah. to get red mana all the yeah. time. Red, red can do in, one shot mana. One shot mana. So anyway, yeah, that, that was me doing red. In, in, anyway, red can do this. Are the waiters inspired by anyone in particular? No, no, this one isn't isn't based on any like like, like the Goblin Bowling team was. Mm -hmm. This was just someone making funny pictures of goblins. Uh, Pete Bender's obviously making funny pictures of goblins. I like that I mean, one of the options okay. on the menu is cooked rock. In, in, okay. in the right goblin deck, that'd be very good. All right, then we have Remodel. Okay, so this card, the, the most interesting thing about this card is it's a manticore being remodeled. That's what's being remodeled is the Masticore. Mm -hmm. It's an actual Masticore, which is a popular magic creature. Or it's, uh, sorry, it's a uh, two and a green for an instant. If you okay. control two or more green permanents that share an artist, because artists matter, you may play yeah. remodel without paying its mana cost to exile target artifact. Right. So, so. Th this is a card that, uh, right, playing off Masticore. That's it's got the three card. mouths. Yes, yeah, so if you look at the actual card, it's Masticore. It's terrifying. Um, and the idea was that we were, there was an artist theme in the set. Artist mm -hmm. mattered, so mm -hmm. that's one of our themes. Um, the other fun thing is I was, I got, because I, I had to design the cards individually, a lot of the flavor text were, were using graphic jokes. So I like the idea that this is playing off of this old house. Yeah, so it, I it, love it's, that. A, it, it's a little TV guide log line. So anyway, this old grove. Remember, right. uh, and, and we didn't remember. Know people, remember the TV guide? We were worried that people might not realize it's a master core. So the flavor text just like a rusted master core makes a beautiful addition to any card. <laughs> Reminds you it's a master core. So, um, so I noticed because this is one of the artist matter cards. It's like Lars Grant. Wild Wild West, so for like, is that right? The thing theme? we did to the artists is we said to all the artists, um, if you want, you can have a nickname, and some of the artists wanted to do the nickname and some didn't. Mm. Um, if we one of three things either you could give us a nickname, you could let us make a nickname, or you could not have a nickname. Um, and I don't know whether we came up with this one and he did, but his last name is West, so Wild Wild West. So, is from in the uh, no, 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 from no, 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 you, don't, perspective, you don't count the okay. I was gonna say, is right. Lars Grant Wild, Lars Wild West, Grant West the same a, as Lars Grant yeah, West? Okay, it's the same. Yeah. Good, good. The, the, nickname, the, the nickname doesn't change things, might come up in Commander. Yeah, yeah. all right. Next, we have okay, Word Mail. Um, so what's it do, Kathleen? It's, it's a it's uh, an enchant creature for one white mana. It says enchanted creature gets one plus one plus one for each word in its name. That's very good. <laughs> right. So if you notice here, um, the, in the art, the card anger has a little tiny Sergio where infernal spawn of infernal spawn of evil has a big one because he's got a long name. <laughs> um, one of the things we can do in Silver Border that we can't do in Black Border is we can't care about qualities of names. Mm -hmm. That's something Black, Black Border can refer to a name, yeah. like it is that card, but it can't care about the qualities of a name, um, mostly because we are in other languages, and different languages might be different number of words and things. Um, but anyway, we, in Unsets, we care about it. So, uh, I do. Oh, okay. and yes, and this is... Uh, um, our our market research shows that players like really long card names, so we made this card to have the longest card name ever, Elemental, which is very good with Word Mail, by the way. That's, that's the combo. Yeah. Um, I, I also love the flavor text on Word Mail is suck it on it. Stang says Solkanar the Swamp King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are both legends, le uh, legendary creatures. Stang twin, though, would get plus two, plus two. That's, That's true. true. All right, next we have a Beeble card. We have Bursting Beebles. Bursting Beebles. Which is having a, some challenge with there that card okay. reader. There you go. So, Bursting Beebles is two and a blue for two two. That says Bursting Beebles is unblockable as long as defending player controls two or more non land permanents that share an artist. So what happened was Ooh. Jeff Marincola, who this is the first card that does the Beeble, not done by Jeff Marincola, but Jeff Marincola for the Duelist, he had to draw a Squee on the cover of the Duelist, and he ended up having Squee being attacked by these little pink things, and that we they so entertained us, we had him start putting them in Magic. So Magic for a while had a bunch of the Beebles in it, and then at one point the creative team decided they were a little bit too silly, mm. and so we stopped doing them in Black Border. But I love the Beebles and in Silver Border, so I brought them back. So in the flavor text. We make a little joke about the fact that we stopped doing them. Like thousands of others, the Beebles quit magic for several years following the release of Mercadian Masks. So, anyway, uh, a little, a little, laugh, little big at Masks. Laugh, laugh at yourself there. Yeah, yeah, bouncing Beebles. There's a bunch of Beebles. Like, uh, Jeff Maricola did, I think, all of them. I had actually, I, I knew this prior, but for some reason, because of the uh, blurry Beeble and Unstable yeah. and, and the Bursting Beebles here, I had forgotten that Beebles actually originated in black bordered magic. Because yes. they do seem like a very silver border. Yes, they now we're just type. a silver border thing. People, I made sure to put one Unstable because I, I like Beebles. So, next. All right, next. Oh, Vile Bile. Okay, so I'm in the Unrules Manager, and this card made me make a new rule in Magic. Um, I had to clarify that this card does not punish you for it touching you. It only punishes for you touching it. 
because people were chasing other people around stores with it, terrorizing them. And it was store owners were writing to me, can you help us? This is causing problems. So. Um, so you have to touch it. It can't touch you. So you this and hazmat suit, which is unstable. Yeah, you can't you can't run around and touch people with it. That that doesn't work. To clarify, it's one in a black. Okay. For a two and a half, two and a half ooze, and when a player's skin or fingernail touches vile bile, that player loses two life. Note by the way, there's a there's a mega rule that applies to hazmat suit and to vile bile that for purposes of cards that care about touching, uh, which also cramp bumper cares. Um, in, in um, unstable, uh, the sleeve is considered an extension of the card. No. So touching the sleeve is the same thing as touching the card. Right. I like that you thought far enough ahead to mention fingernails, so that people weren't like yeah. sort of trying to guide the card around yeah. with the back. You gotta of get it, some yeah. chopsticks or something okay, like next. that. Okay. Next, next, Goblin SWAT team, which is three and a red for a two-two creature goblin warrior that says, say goblin SWAT team. Put a plus one, plus one counter on goblin SWAT team unless an opponent swats the table within five seconds. Play this ability only once each turn. So one of the things I love about uncards is what I call mini games. Mm. Um, and so this is a fun mini game, which is, can I say the world goblin SWAT team without my opponent recognizing I've done it and then hitting the table? So that what you're trying to do is just casually mentioning it, you know, oh, I attack with my this and that, and my goblin SWAT team, and they all attack. And that you, have, you just want to casually get it in there, because if you can do that without them realizing it, you, it gets bigger. So this is a fun little game, and, and uh, there's some nuance to playing what's the, the, what, what the What's the best strategy? The best strategy is sometimes to say I attack with my goblins, and sometimes say goblin SWAT team, so that you're referring to it, but you're not always using the full name. So that, like, mm. I attack with this, and this is my goblins, this is my goblins, this is my goblin SWAT team. Like, so that when you do it, they're kind of used to you not using the full name, so right. then when you sneak it in there. Yeah, and then so. several turns later, once they've become accustomed to yeah. it, then you can start getting it yes. in there because they're thinking about different cards at right. that point. So, you know, there's, there's some subtlety. This is a card that actually has some some play some play skills, but a different kind of play skill. Oh, mm. Five seconds is a long time. Here's a, here's a card that's maybe not so subtle. It's Snot. Snot. It's um, a, well, S-N-O-T. Uh, but a, a Snot is a one green for a star star. Star squared, star squared. Star squared, par two, I guess. As Snot comes into play, you may stick it onto another creature named Snot and play. If you do, all those creatures form a single creature. Snot's power and toughness are each equal to the square number of Snot stuck together. One is a 1, 1, 2, 4, or 4, 4, 3, or 9, 9, and 4 are 16, 16. So it's and, like host and augment. And this is yeah, common. It, it is the precursor. Well, I want it to be common so you get a bunch of them, honestly, so you can, you can build a giant Snot. Um, the idea of this card was the most popular card in Unglued was BFM, yeah. which was the left and right side you put together to make a big thing. Meld. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, and so I was trying to play around in similar space, and the idea I liked is that you get as many, you could keep stacking them on each other. Um, there actually ended up being a really fun green blue deck where you use clones Ooh. because you keep Ooh. going. But you can only have four snots in your deck, but you can clone your snot. Anyway, <coughs> and remember, it, it's exponential. So, like, it starts getting crazy big as you start putting more on. Um, and I know there's someone who wrote into me that uh, it once got like two to the sixteenth, whatever that is. So wow. So anyway, you can get really big. Wow. Okay, next. Next, cheap ass. Ah, the ass cycle. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that uh, uh, the brand, obviously the brand team asked of me when we were doing Unhinged is they wanted the humor to be a little more sophomoric. So I said, okay. So um, okay, we had this, sure. I added in this donkey theme uh, so I could get the word ass on a lot of cards because they're donkeys. Um, and so there's a cycle of donkeys at Common that were all puns. So let's see if I remember correctly. White was cheap ass, blue was smart ass, black was badass, red was dumb ass, and green was fat ass. Nice. Um, and all of them, one of the things about the donkey folk is all of them had fractions in their power toughness. Um, yeah, the cheap ass is one and a white for a one, uh, power one, toughness three and a half, and spells you play cost half a mana less. But get two of them in play, and there you go. Hey. So originally this was actually called tight ass, not cheap ass, but then we realized that there was dual meaning to tight ass, and we didn't mm. quite want to go there. Mm, that's um, fair. We, we meant like a cheap ass, but, uh, so we yeah. ended up changing to cheap ass, because since... Um, they're a penny pincher. That's why they're, they're some cards that help you give you make it a, a mana less. Well, they have mana less. That's that's you know, that's a lot of mana. Yeah. I'll give you half mana less. Yeah. Okay. Next. Next, we have the uh, what is this card? This is Carnivorous called Carnivorous Death, Death Parrot. Parrot. Yeah, which is a two-two flyer for two. That's great. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Carnivorous Death Parrot unless you say its flavor text. 
and it says save a kill spell to deal with this guy. Okay, so the fun part of this card is there's a cycle of gotcha card. Gotcha was a mechanic from a hinge. If you did a certain action, you could get the cards back from your graveyard. There's a cycle of common that were verbal gotchas, and then each of the gotchas had two names, two words in its name. Um, this, like, is, this is a massive downside. Anyway. And so the idea was that though there were five cards that if you said any word in its title, you got it back. Right. Well, all five words are in this name. So saying this flavor text gets any of those five cards back. Wow. So that, really? Yes. I never knew that. Yes. So th 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 that's, why th that's why this flavor text is what it is. Right. It's because it hits all five words. It's, uh -oh. It I hits just, all five cards. It's I just kill, thought... kill, spell, yeah. deal. Guy, and is it this or save? Save. Save. Oh my god. Yeah, save life, I think, is the name save, of it. Save, kill, spell. Yeah. I, I deal kill, guy. kill, destroy. Wow. Um, spell, counter. Anyway, th th I mean, I it kind of works because a 2 2 flyer is Just for like two Tabernacle, is very though. Good. If you draw your card, this, this parrot's toast. Right. So it is funny because this, this card is really, it's a meta thing going on in it. That's amazing. Okay, I next. had no idea. I this is that. when fluffy bunnies attack. Which, um, it's an instant for four. A target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn where X is the number of times that letter of your choice appears in creature's name. Right, so the idea is when you play it, you name a letter, and then for every time that letter appears, you do minus X, minus X. Uh, there's a new card in Unstable called uh, Capital Offense mm. that plays in similar space. Um, it, that cares about the whole card, not just the name. Um, yeah, but it's one of the things, a capital letter appears in the, right, like, the anywhere rules in the, text? Yeah, or in the, anywhere in the, in the text? I think the whole card, I think. Um... So one thing about when fluffy bunnies attack is I like the idea of kill spells that just have a different variant than normal. Like, what does this kill? A different subset of things than you're used to. Um, and longer, the longer your name it is, the more likely you're going to die. Um, so one of the things I liked about this is... Yeah, capital fence. Um, yeah, oh, it appears in rule stacks. Not, not on the whole card, just in rule stacks. Um, but so one of the cool things about this card was, uh, about when fluffy bunnies attack was, we came up with this fun name, and then we got the art back to match the name, but nothing about the mechanic matched the name. So if you look at the flavor text on the card, uh, so we have Bucky was a flavor text writer. He paired a bunch of cards. Get it? Bunnies, letters, minus X, minus X? Me neither. <laughs> it's just making... So we, we don't were, know what happened. We were making fun of sometimes we have to explain jokes in the flavor text. Yeah. And so this is kind of making fun of us that we do that. All right, next we have Rocket. Powered Turbo Slug, which super is haste. super haste. One was super haste. So there were a cycle of cards called the Pax in um, Future Sight, mm -hmm. and this talk about Silver Border coming to Black Border. This mechanic basically turned into the Pax. So the idea is, it's a free spell in the sense that you get to play it for free, but next turn you have to pay for it or you lose. Um, and so, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of different packs. So anyway, this, this was the precursor to the packs. Um, you'll notice, by the way, if you look at um, Rocket Power Turbo Slug, uh, at the bottom of the, of the screen, the Turbo Slug is running through the art, but he's actually in the bottom. So he zooms by them, this thing, and then he's coming around again. He he's actually obliterated the, he the flavor text. the flavor text. If you actually figure it out, what we did is the actual flavor text is there, and if you sort it all out, the flavor text is, did you really bother to figure this out? <laughs> Something close to that. Thank you for saving us the trouble. I'm paraphrasing. I was going to ask, yeah. Okay. All right, next. Wow. Gluteus Maximus. So, uh, go ahead. No, oh, oh. Yeah. Five, five for three and two green. Three, uh, as Gluteus Maximus comes into play, an opponent chooses one of your fingers. Thumbs are fingers, too. When the chosen finger isn't touching Gluteus Maximus, sacrifice Gluteus Maximus. Mm -hmm. Oh my. So, uh, spy, one of the Sly Spy variants also references a finger. So, uh, Thumbs and Fingers 2 is actually applies to that as well. Uh, that's just a real world thing, Thumbs and Fingers. Um, <laughs> so, the idea of this card is it's a physical dexterity card that once you play, you must touch it. The idea is that this card's super sticky and things get stuck to it. It's, it's power toughness gets stuck to it. Part of the card gets stuck to it. If you look on the... Uh, the, the there's, there's a dude People there. stuck yeah. to it and... Anyway, so the idea was a physical dexterity card. Most of the physical dexterity cards are in black, actually. This is one of the few physical dexterities outside of black. Hmm. I like that you can see the card back peeling through. Okay, head-to-head -head is a cycle of... Um, uh, we had a five cycle of mini games you would play, where you'd stop playing a mini game. Uh, so white played basically 20 questions, it was seven questions, but like 20 questions. Blue was a breath-holding contest, black was a staring contest, red was rock, paper, scissors, and green was arm wrestling. Is that Braids being interrogated? Yes, that is Braids being interrogated in a room, but she's not talking. This Braids, is, Braids won't talk. This is a single white mana instant, by the way, that's you and target opponent play seven questions about the top card of that player's library, which is they look at the card, you ask six yes or no questions about the card, they answer truthfully, you guess the card's name, that's question seven, and the player reveals the card. If you win, prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by a source of your choice. 
just wow. Nice. Oh, we got ball. a foil in our pack. A too. foil stain power, the rarest foil. Um, so staying power is the card I try to get in real magic. Uh, basically, it says, in uh, so it's two and a white. As long as staying power is in play, until end of turn, and this turn, effects don't end. So if you giant grow something, it's forever plus three plus three. <laughs> I try to do this in real magic. Uh, it was it stayed in the file for a while. The rules manager finally figured out what do we need to do to do this, and it was ruled not worth it. And so it got pushed off. I believe that. It's, yeah, it's a two and a white for an enchantment that, yeah, just makes things yeah. never end. Also, by the way, in it, this is, so what's going on in the art? Uh, it is the, it is Wild Mongrel. Um, oh. It's Wild Mongrel. I'll say Mongo is his name. But it's, it's Wild Mongrel. Huge. Because Wild, Wild Mongrel can get bigger. And so, change colors. And change colors. So what if you, that never stopped? And so he's broken the frame. But anyway, that is, it's making a joke on Wild Mongrel. Oh. And we also got a very pretty swamp. So what happened here is, so if we look at the first one, sorry, so we look, look, look back at the first one we had, um, we had more of a frame to it, and so what we tried to do for the second one is less frame. In fact, it's interesting, what happened is we had two versions, one with no frame and one with a tiny frame, and I went around and asked people, and the no frame is considered just too much, so we ended mm -hmm. up going with the tiny frame, but it's kind of funny that Unstable like goes that extra limit. So it's it like there. there's almost no frame in Unstable. All right, so do we want to very I'm, quickly I'm... go through Pack of Unstable? <laughs> yep, sure, let's okay. try it. Let's try it. We, we, we may have to bail partway through because literally Mark has to go and get on, a, on an airplane. Okay, well, can I look through and pick the best stories? Yes. Sure. Okay, let me, let me pick the best stories out here. Oh, look at that. We have two of the same card. All right. Okay, Mario Kill. Perfect. This will be the story from this from this pack. Okay, this is the story? Yeah, this is the story. Okay, so Mary O'Kill. So uh, she is... is um, okay. Uh, one second. Okay, no, sorry. so Mary O'Kill, you want to read it? Yeah, She's five, a five yeah. and a Rakdos for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature human villain, and for one and a Rakdos, switch a kill bot or Mary O'Kill in your hand with one on the battlefield. Okay, so the fun thing about this one is... Um, the League of Daphne Doom are supervillains, and I like the idea of having a cabal of supervillains run them. So there's actually four different legendary uh, villains here. Um, I was playing into tropes, like supervillain tropes. So one of the tropes is a supervillain in which you don't know if it's really the supervillain or it's kind of the robot equivalent. Mm. Um, there's a bunch of villains that play in that space. Right. Um, and so the idea here is like, you that, don't that, know. That wasn't me. You killed one of my. Right. You, yes. It was actually one oh, of my like, kill bots. So so the, my death are greatly exaggerated. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea essentially is that I you didn't know whether it was Mario Kill or one of this the kill bots. And what they're we did so is cute. we made four kill bots. Um, we used the variant printing, so they have four different names, so that you can have sixteen of them in your deck. Um, that's a clever way to have more of them. Uh, <laughs> notice it's curious, delighted, despondent. I think it's de despondent, and excited. Oh, so they all enraged, like... enraged. They had to fit within the collector number. I was about to say. I love so that. the reason they're all clumped together is it had to be in between whatever C and E was. So they so all have names that start with C, D, D, or e. e. Yeah. So they all were put together. Um, and if you notice, by the way, the art doesn't change, but the flavor text does change between them. So uh, if you play with my first tome, where you read flavor text, you have to guess the card. Killbots are good in that deck because uh, click were beep click. Oh, no, no, that's enraged Killbot. Um, so anyway, the idea was that we wanted to swap it, and we wanted so I could have it in my hand. But the way we wrote Mario Kill was there's a lot of shenanigans you can do now because there's ways in Magic to make things Killbots. Magic can turn other cards into Killbots because it's a creature type. Mm -hmm. So now um, you can exchange Mario Kill in your hand with any Killbot, not just the, the Killbots from this set, but any changeling or if you play conspiracy or uh, conspiracy the card um there's things you can do to change it and if she is in play you can do shenanigans where you can change two killbots with each other so if she's in play you can take something that's a killbot for whatever reason and something in your hand that's a killbot for whatever reason for example uh, there's a black card called conspiracy i say conspiracy there's also a blue card but uh if you're playing commander mario kill can be your, your um commander and there's a black card called conspiracy from long ago that um lets you make everything a creature type of your choice in all zones. So if you have Conspiracy out in Mario Kill, mm -hmm. you can just swap any creature in your hand with any creature in play. And not just your creatures. Um, conspiracy affect all cards? Oh, no, you own. So anyway, you can exchange any of your stuff with any of the of, uh, other stuff in your hand. So someone, some... someone out there, take a picture of this. Like, I want someone to be able to do this, mm -hmm. to 
swap control between Mario Kill and Dr. Julius Jumblemorph. Because he's every creature type. So he's also a kill yes, bot. Yes, he is a kill bot, yes. You, you can, by the way, if you're somehow playing four colors, you can, for example, turn, if she's in play, you could turn him in your hand into a kill bot. Yeah. Yeah, you can swap that. So. <laughs> anyway, I, I just I, I love the art that when, if she, like, once she hunkers down and pulls down the umbrella, right. she just looks oh, like a killbot. Oh, originally, by the way, they put this in an artifact frame, not a hybrid frame, because they thought, oh, she's hiding out to be an artifact, but it was causing too much confusion, so we ended up making it a hybrid frame. Hmm. Um, the reason also that she's hybrid is we wanted to make her flexible, but we wanted her for legend, for commander purposes to be red and black. Hmm. So we made her hybrid so that you, you're not required to play two colors to play her. You could actually play her in a black deck or play her in a red deck. Um, so if you're not playing commander and don't care about color identity, you don't necessarily have to play both colors. But because for, we wanted her to be a commander, we put in two colors so you could do that. Um, okay. The one problem that we didn't solve, we didn't think of at the time is, and this is how you can tell we made this years ago, the commander, we're still learning about commander, she doesn't work out of the command zone. Right. So. Uh, Fair enough. But anyway. Um, if you can get her in play, though, if you, and you have conspiracy and kill by, you can do shenanigans with her, but it's not. Awesome. It, anyway. So. Well, that is going to have to do it for this week's episode of Tap Tap Concede because, like I said, we have to drive Mark to the airport, like, to to the airport right so. now. <laughs> uh, so a little, maybe a little shorter episode than usual, but I think the same number of words. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. A reminder to check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR and that this show and all of our shows are brought to you by you at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's fun being here. This was, this was I, a blast. I like talking on stage. Our on sets. We love having you. So hopefully, <laughs> hey, if you ever want to come back f to a pre-pre release that's not for an unset, uh, you're, you'd be welcome. Or just make another unset, and we'll have you for that. So okay. Well, if people uh, hint hint would buy the unset, then uh, maybe I can make another one. So oh. there we go. All right. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.